I have to emphasize that if meeting girls was my only priority, like it was number one and nothing else really mattered, I wouldn't come to Ukraine anymore. Experience. So welcome back to another vodka vodcast with me, Connor Klein. Uh, I am speaking to you from the port in Odessa, Odessa Mom on the shores of the Black Sea in Ukraine. As you can see, we're getting close to sunset again. It's one of my favorite places to shoot the sunset uh, here in Odessa. Just absolutely beautiful light. Uh, I've shot a lot of b-roll here with a lot of girlfriends during the summer so that was cool. So today's video is kind of inspired by a lot of the questions that I've had with my from my clients in the last say three four months because I shot back in the winter early I guess early spring a lot of content in the neighboring country to Ukraine which is Belarus and a lot of viewers were very enthusiastic about that. A lot of my clients um, when I talk to them, they decide to go to Belarus and I thought it would be good to explain why you should still come to Ukraine, especially, you know, looking forward to the winter and next summer 2020, because now it is the end of September. So I see like Odessa, it's going to go into winter hi hibernation and it's not going to be until next summer that the city really takes uh, comes back to life again. So it's good to recap in this video exactly why I still come back to Ukraine. Um, I have been spending more time in Belarus. I go into a little bit about why that is in this video. And also Russia is now becoming a lot more attractive as a destination. So you want to think about that as well. But in this video, I'm going to focus on why Ukraine uh, and what it is about this country that attracts me in particular. Now, first thing, the first point, is just the diversity of cities uh, here in Ukraine. Of course, I'm in Odessa and it's by, as you can see behind me, we're at a port. So it's on the seaside. So you have all that, especially during the summer, that like whole beach vibe. Uh, the water here is not the best. It's not about swimming in beautiful water. This is not, um, you know, the Caribbean or Sardinia where we used to spend a lot of my own summers many moons ago before I moved more to this region. Uh, but there is, of course, cool beach clubs and a lot of stuff to do by the seaside. It's extremely vibrant. And you can contrast that with, say, Kiev. And actually, um, my clients were commenting, uh, who are here with me in Odessa, we're actually going to go to Kiev tomorrow. And they were commenting about just how relaxed this is for a city of over one million people. Uh, and the vibe, it's very seaside. It's not a village, although at times it can feel a little bit like that if you're living here, I'm sure. Uh, but you contrast that to the capital, the capital of Ukraine. I think the population is probably around 4 million in Kiev uh, and it's extremely fast paced compared to here. Like it's not going to be as fast paced as maybe some other huge cities, huge metropolises in the world, like maybe New York or I'm not really sure, somewhere in Asia, for example, a big Chinese city. But it is definitely markedly different to here, which is, of course, relaxed. You're by the seaside. It's got that kind of holiday summer vibe a lot of the year, even outside of summer, about it. It's not a big, a bustling um, capital where people go to make their fortune necessarily. And it's very fast paced, the center of politics and business in the region. Uh, and of course, in Ukraine, you also have a little bit difference in maybe how the people look a little bit, not only how they act, like I would say, uh, normally I'm talking about girls here in Odessa, that they tend to be a little bit more Mediterranean uh, in look than a lot of people realize before they come here. That's going to be different in Kiev. Kiev, um, I mean, people come from all over the country, basically to the capital. So you're going to have a bit more of a mix, uh, of course. Um, this region with its history, especially during sovereign times, how a lot of people come from other parts of the uh, Soviet Union at the time because they were in one country uh, and people are going to look a little bit different, a little less Mediterranean, maybe a bit more classically Slavic um, in terms of being maybe a bit, maybe even a bit taller, a little bit blonder, a little bit maybe more lighter eye color, maybe lighter skin color than you're going to find here in Odessa, for example. Uh, and then culturally, Odessa has kind of like a microculture because it is a port city with a very recent history. It doesn't have a very long history. Uh, the city was founded uh, a little bit over 200 years ago only when this region was conquered uh, from the Ottomans by Elizabeth the Great. So, and then it was repopulated by 
people from the Russian Empire at the time. So it was really a mix from the region that came here. And also the food. I mean, of course, you have traditional Ukrainian restaurants also in Odessa, but it's a little bit stronger uh, and a lot more of a mix, I would say, in the capital like Kiev. And the nightlife is very different in, in Kiev. It's a lot more like you're going to find in Western Europe, for example, a very cool city, uh, especially with the proliferation in the last two years with low-cost airlines going to Kiev. Uh, now it's kind of like the new Berlin to go. There's a lot of hipster places. There's a lot of hipster clubs, that kind of Berlin scene, because uh, obviously Berlin is a lot more expensive than Kiev. Uh, it's now actually moved a lot of it to, to, to Kiev. So you're going to see that also in the last five years, I think, since the Euromaidan revolution, the city has become a lot more Europeanized. It looks uh, a good bit more similar in terms of aesthetics and vibe and how the people dress. Uh, com compared to five years ago, or maybe a little bit longer than five years ago, when it was a lot more, we'll say, post-Soviet looking and maybe a bit more similar to the vibe in Russia. Although, having recently been to St. Petersburg, at least in St. Petersburg, I would say it's actually a, a bit similar to Kiev in that sense, although that's not representative of all of Russia, if you catch my drift. Um, so, that's, you know, two of the main cities that you're going to be interested in going to. So there you have cool Kiev and you also have like the summer vibe here in Odessa uh, by the seaside. Now the third city that you're going to be interested in visiting um, in Ukraine, especially if you haven't been here very often, is Lviv in the west. So Lviv in Russian, Lviv in Ukrainian. And that is very different in aesthetics, culture and people uh, to both Odessa and to Kiev. Um, first of all, Ukrainians like to say it's the most Ukrainian city uh, in the country. I disagree. I think it's the least Ukrainian. And I'm going to explain why. Because it is actually the most kind of traditionally ethnically Ukrainian city. And that's not actually representative uh, for the big cities and really the country in Ukraine, which is quite not going to be like it is in Lviv. So Lviv architecture is stunning in the city center. It uh, was in the Austro-Hungarian Empire. It was also part of Poland for a a significant amount of time so the architecture is more representative of cities like Krakow if you've been there in Poland than Kiev or Odessa it looks very different now the people are also very different again I'm normally looking at the girls when I'm there but they tend to be uh, definitely shorter on average they appear to be uh, definitely more brown hair uh, than say lighter colors like blonde. Although blonde's basically the main one. That's going to be a lighter color to bridge. So more brunettes than blondes for sure in uh, Lviv. Uh, a bit shorter as I was saying. I would not say they're as beautiful as in the rest of Ukraine. Sorry, girls from Lviv. Um, you have other qualities. And the culture is a lot more conservative uh, than you're going to find here in Odessa, for example, which has always been a port city, always been very open. Uh, Lviv is a lot more closed, I would say, as a city and its local people are not as open they're going to be here in Odessa or in Kiev, which is, of course, a city to which a lot of Ukrainians just moved to. So they've left their hometown, so they're not kind of caught in their cliques as much as you're going to find in Lviv. Now, as a city it's, and the nightlife, it's, again, very different. It's not the kind of clubbing capital like Kiev or the summer, summer capital like here. Um, you can go there all year round. I actually like to go there in the winter because I just think it looks so beautiful with the snow and the roofs. And you know, it's the there is another city in Ukraine called Chernovitsi, uh, Chernovitsi in German, uh, and that's also got a lot of this kind of similar Austrian, uh, Austro-Hungarian architecture. But it's very hard to get there, and it's a lot smaller. Uh, and Lviv has an international airport, so for you and all practicality, you're going to be thinking of Lviv if you want that kind of scene here in Ukraine. Um, and it has a lot of themed bars that are actually a lot of fun. Like, very cool to go in a group, you like go oh, with some buddies and some, you know, a girlfriend or two. And it's, a, it's actually a really cool city to go out in as well. Uh, but it's not a clubbing capital. I don't like the nightclubs in Lviv. Uh, and I would say I like the vibe a lot much earlier in the evening. Um, so it's more a cultural capital. Uh, of course, people, this is one of the most important points and what I was originally talking about before I digressed is um, the main language used in Lviv is Ukrainian, uh, not Russian. You can, of course, speak Russian or English in the city center and everything that's, you know, catering to visitors to the city. Uh, that's not a problem. There are all these stories from Russian media that if you speak Russian, they're going to beat you up or something. It's complete rubbish. Uh, you can speak in Russian in uh, Lviv if you want to, uh, but if you're not Russian speaking, which I assume you are, uh, then 
yeah, just you can use English or Ukrainian if you've learned some Ukrainian. Uh, that's not typical of the other cities you're going to visit in Ukraine. That's why I say that Lviv is actually kind of the least Ukrainian city because people don't speak Russian uh, in everyday life. And um, the majority of this country does speak Ukrainian. It is the national language. I know that. Uh, and Russian is not. But in all practicality, the main language, the main language used here in Odessa and still in Kiev is Russian on a daily basis. What's well, going to affect you going to a restaurant, etc. Now in Kiev, it has changed a bit and there are a lot more menus in Ukrainian as opposed to Russian. Uh, but for all intents and purposes for your visit, you're, if, if you're not going to speak in English, then you're going to use Russian uh, in the other cities like Kharkov, Odessa, Dnipro, uh, Kiev, obviously. So Lviv is different for that. And that's why it says the least you can also, they have a different religion that's very prominent in uh, Lviv. And that is the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church, if I got that right in the right order. I can this is the right words, but I think that's what you call it. Uh, and that's different to like the main religion of the country, which is Orthodoxy, uh, Christian Orthodoxy. So uh, that also gives a little bit more flavor in terms of uh, the architecture for the religious monuments, you know, like churches, is different there than you're going to see. Uh, and that has a distinct flavor and gives it a particularity. Um, and it's a beautiful place. So I would say if you're like you have three very solid options there for different kind of vibes, right? So you have the big bustling metropolis capital, Kiev, super cool city, uh, a lot going on. It's kind of become like a new Berlin. Here in Odessa, you have in summer, I don't recommend coming to Odessa in winter uh, because well, it depends on who you are. If you like gray and <laughs> it's a bit cold and it's kind of empty and the summer clubs are closed, so it's very different. Uh, but during the summer, it's a pretty amazing place in terms of the vibe and the seaside uh, and people. Um, it has its own kind of micro culture in terms of like a specific dishes that are from Odessa. It's very, because it's by the seaside, there's a lot more fish uh, and you have all that clubbing, you know, at sunrise. Um, you know, we never go to sleep basically before sunrise in Odessa in the summer. So then you have the third option, which is Lviv, and that is lovely Lviv, and it's a cultural capital. Uh, coffee culture is very strong there, I've got to say that. Food is even more, um, I was even better in Lviv maybe than in the other cities. Um, actually, it's good in all of them, but uh, it's, it's got another distinct flavor, different regional cuisine there as well. And it's more traditional Ukrainian, so things like Vareniki, Borsh are more uh, present in the restaurants in Lviv than you're going to find here. So there you have three solid options and that's why I think that Ukraine is still super interesting to go because um, you have that kind of diversity like uh, just to give a quick like, comparison in Belarus where we film a lot it, you don't have that kind of dichotomy at all. Basically if you're going to go to Belarus you're going to go to Minsk. Uh, the smaller towns are way too small for my clients to go to uh, so I don't recommend that for you and you're basically going to have one option everything is concentrated in the center doesn't have um, the same kind of local cuisine. I mean, you can eat Draniki and go to one traditional restaurant. One of my clients actually loved it. He loved the food. But in general, it's just not as interesting a place as coming to either of those three cities, uh, either to Lviv, lovely Lviv, cool Kiev, and um, I don't know, awesome Odessa um, here. So that is the first reason to come to Ukraine. Looking forward to the winter 2019, summer 2020 uh, is that kind of diversity in the cities. Now, the second thing to segue into that, because I was talking about food, is the food in Ukraine. Man, do I eat so well in this country. And that's in all of those three cities that I just mentioned. And just the food and the level of food um, is pretty amazing. My father actually came here once and he's a big foodie and he just like absolutely loved the food and restaurants. He was very surprised because he had been previously to Poland and he had expected something similar here and Polish restaurants I mean I know they have improved a lot well in Poland in the last decade uh, but it's still not really close to coming uh, to Ukraine in terms of the options in restaurants Ukrainians love their food there's just a lot of great food and I'm always like an, a trip to Odessa like I'm on now I'm always trying to figure out how I get to go to see all my favorite restaurants and cafes in say the 10 days I had here because <laughs> I obviously even eating out every, you know three times a day um, or twice a day or three times a day it's still hard to fit them all in uh, so just that kind of uh, restaurant culture also um, in terms of let's see you have got the food the cafes especially in Lviv but I think also in Kiev and uh, here 
coffee is very good. Uh, I know it's improved in a lot of countries in Central Europe, I'm kind of comparing Central Europe at the moment. Uh, um, so that's caught up a lot, but here it is also very good for that. And then compared to say Russia, and I should have said earlier that Russia also has of course diversity in cities because it's such a big country. Um, but I'll lead into that later where that, you know, obviously there are a lot of practical difficulties with going to Russia that are starting to change. Uh, so in terms of um, diversity and food, um, here was, I think, just better for that, better for restaurants than also I saw in Russia in general, where I went to uh, Moscow being big. Obviously, Moscow is just such a big you know, cosmopolitan city. It's a different, it's like being in New York or in, say, Tokyo or some huge, well, Tokyo is not so cosmopolitan. So let's say just compared to New York or London, that's where I wanted to compare it to um, in terms of, you know, options for food and restaurants and all that stuff. So that was also top. Now, third thing, also segueing into uh, from restaurants and what you can get as food is of course the price level now there has been inflation it has definitely got up in price since those heady days in post Euromaidan revolution where it was extremely cheap here man I can still remember just after Maidan being in Kharkov which is the second city of the country in the east and they hadn't adjusted the prices yet and the currency basically collapsed and I was having breakfast for like two or three euros at the best cafe in the city it was really that extreme now that doesn't exist today but if you were to compare it to your other options um say belarus and russia and also central europe um not only is the food better here and you know just the options for cafes restaurants overall um definitely the price level it's just still very competitive a lot lower now kiev has caught up a good bit i would say in the last year in terms of price is actually pretty similar to minsk in belarus which makes it a bit cheaper than say st petersburg and definitely cheaper than moscow uh probably not that much cheaper than say warsaw or krakow or these cities in poland though um it's still great value we're talking about some of the cheapest cities in europe in terms of price and what that means is not just because it's cheap like the balkans for example not wanting to put particularly on the Balkans uh, but I found that it was cheap there but the quality was just not comparable to the quality you're gonna get here that's the important thing that I want to emphasize about price is that it's not about it being cheap it's about it being great value for money that means uh, that your dollar euro pound goes so much further here in Ukraine than it's gonna go uh, in the cities further to the east or further to the west actually so we're not never mind in comparison with say London or Paris or New York obviously it's dramatically cheaper uh, to do the same things here than it is there so you can go you know just large it up and be a baller go to best clubs tables uh, champagne whatever uh, in the best restaurants all the time and it's going to be a fraction of the cost um, so it's going to be probably I mean compared to New York it's going to be probably a third of the price I would say definitely uh, a bit cheaper than half so that kind of price point, uh, but also compared to Russia or Belarus, um, with the exception of Kiev, which is almost up to those mince prices at least, uh, it's also dramatically, uh, your money's just gonna go further and you're gonna be able to just large it up even more than you can in Russia or in Belarus. That's another good point and why Ukraine is still super competitive uh, for that reason and why it makes sense to come here still. So the fourth reason why I think Ukraine is still worth visiting is just from the political point of view it's been between Russia and we'll say the European Union and been trying to find its what is a new identity basically in political direction economic direction over the last five years actually for the last since I guess the Orange Revolution back in 2004 if I remember correctly when that was so that's 15 years already and as I alluded to earlier, Kiev has definitely changed dramatically in the last five years since the Euromaidan revolution. I also I did a podcast episode on my experience when they're going to link that up in a card down below in the description. Go check that out. If you want to know what it was like being an Irishman uh, on Maidan during the revolution in 2000, end of 2013, beginning of 2014. And for me personally, because I studied international relations, actually a focus on the former Soviet Union. Of course, this is uh, such an interesting reason, region for that particular reason, is the political situation and seeing how that's changed and how the culture has adapted. Uh, there is still a conflict in the east of the country, uh, in Donbass. Uh, Crimea has been annexed by Russia, so it's de facto in Russia, de jure in Ukraine understand the legal terms in international law so legally it's part of Ukraine but it's actually administered by the Russian Federation at the moment so reason for number five 
is the huge surprise if you've actually been watching a lot of my videos about Ukrainian girls. If you haven't been watching those, you maybe would think, duh, of course, but the big reasons to come to Ukraine, why it's still so interesting is to date beautiful women because Ukraine does have still a lot of beautiful women. Uh, if you've seen all those videos, I'm gonna link them up, of course, if I still have space for cards above and down in the description, uh, reasons not to date Ukrainian women because they're are huge issues for foreign guys to come here um, in the hope of meeting beautiful women or just meeting girls in general and they get caught out and they get scammed and they have all these difficulties even if they're not scammed nearly all of them uh, there are just a couple exceptions that I've ever met uh, coming to Ukraine and that is why I make those videos so that you are aware and that you don't get scammed or have some you know a bad experience when you come here I wouldn't want to see that so yes the fifth reason why Ukraine is still very close to my heart right here are the Ukrainian girls so there still are a lot of beautiful girls I'm gonna be making another vodcast episode about why there are less beautiful girls here today in Ukraine than there would have been there were 10 years ago uh, that's coming up maybe even the very next episode is gonna be about the internationalization of beauty so this country still has you know I've traveled to all 50 countries in Europe I've traveled to every country in the girl in the world where uh, which are famous for beautiful women and this country probably marginally is still the country with the most beautiful women uh, overall um, I did say earlier that I didn't think the girls in Lviv were as beautiful as here so there is a bit of a diversity <laughs> in depending on what city you go to in Ukraine but definitely uh, girls in Lviv uh, on a European average are still uh, obviously way way above average and it's just that it gets ridiculous the further east you go basically um, so girls in Kharkiv or Odessa or Kiev uh, definitely the standard of beauty is uh, one of the highest in the world uh, I have another vodcast episode where I go into a little bit uh, almost that exact topic with my friend Andy from the UK we've traveled every to more or less to all the same countries in the world we gave our list top five countries for the best girls so we didn't just talk about beauty uh, again down in the description and if I have space up in a card above uh, definitely go and check that out as well if you're more interested if you're interested in knowing more about where to find beautiful women um, country wise but um, yeah for beauty for girls and you know I just have so many memories here of uh, great relationships um, and fun times over the last few years that it's very hard not to come back but I have to emphasize that if meeting girls was my only priority like it was number one and nothing else really mattered I wouldn't come to Ukraine anymore uh, for sure um, I used to have a uh, kind of an expression with one of my Italian friends here Luigi that we came for the first time for I think the prima volta siamo venuti per la figa e dopo siamo rimasti per la l'amore o l'atmosfera no? I don't really ex remember exactly what we used to say together but basically the first time we came here we came here for the girls and that we stayed for the love of the city and the atmosphere uh, and that definitely rings true today this country has so much more to offer that's why it started with about the diversity of the cities and the cool vibe and you know that's something that I don't find in say Belarus um, as much so there you have my overview of why you should still come to Ukraine that's why I'm still going to come back in 2020 I will be spending a lot of time as I mentioned in both Belarus going to finish up filming a lot there I started a lot of different uh, vlogs actually want to go to a few more of the provincial cities and then I think I've covered Belarus as much as you can cover Belarus and then Russia opening up it's not going to be visa free to Kaliningrad um, effectively visa free for a week every 30 days also to St. Petersburg uh, from the start of next month October 1st so that's what I'm going to be uh, doing in the next few months if well, you got the end of this this video again to the end of another vodcast episode with me it is the vodka vodcast I didn't uh, start off this video with a vodka because I was basically too lazy to bring a bottle of vodka all the way down to the port I will work on that in future episodes and drink my vodka at the beginning would have done me good because it's a bit cold here uh, but what are you doing next weekend because I am about to go to Kiev one of the cities I mentioned in of course the capital here in Ukraine with some clients who've been here with me in Odessa last weekend they had a phenomenal time they're completely sold on the whole country and we're going to go together to Kiev uh, this weekend it could be you it could be you obviously you won't see this video until after that but it could be you the following weekend if you are the right person to live the czar experience with me now 
I've said and you know I've changed a lot of these uh, endings to the videos in the last two or three months and that's because I just have spoken to so many viewers and I kind of see the kind of person who's a good fit the kind of person who's not a good fit and I don't care about offending those people who are not a good fit because it's for their own good they're not going to waste their time investing uh, anymore in contacting me or my time as well and they're going to go and find a better option uh, for themselves so if you are a type of guy who well type of guy you are in a in your late 50s, 60s, 70s even, and you buy into this whole scam of <laughs> the desperate Ukrainian 20-year-old Instagram models, not even 20 maybe, it can be a 30-year-old who is absolutely stunning looking. Listen, if you think that you're gonna come here and there are 10 of those girls just standing here on the tarmac, tarmac as you come in on the plane waiting for you to take them away from terrible Ukraine, you're being defrauded. You're being, it's, you're being delusional about it. That's not the situation here. And I can't help you if you believe you buy into those myths and those fantasies, right? There are very dubious matchmaking uh, companies and dating sites and all this kind of stuff, marriage agencies, and they will entertain your fantasy and they will take your money and you will not meet a woman. Almost certainly, 99% of the guys in this, I'm convinced, do not make, um, you know, they don't meet anyone suitable for them using these sites. There are, of course, some boutique firms and they, uh, matchmaking uh, sites that are legitimate from what I can see. I did make some videos of them. I'll link them below in the description. Uh, so you can go take a look if you're one of those people. But that's not the Zara experience. I even had a guy write to me today. Could I set him up on dates in Kiev? Like, wouldn't it be strange? I, this is a serious question. Wouldn't it be strange if I could just pull out my phone and say, guy I've never met, <laughs> who obviously is willing to pay me to set up these dates, but uh, I'm just going to uh, take out uh, my, my phone I should actually take out my phone when I do it. Go into my, you know, let me see. Let me go in here. Uh, go into my contacts and just pick out, you know, 10 stunning model looking girls and just say, hey, call them and say, go meet this guy. Now, wouldn't that be weird? Would these girls really be interested in meeting this guy? I, obviously they would either have to be desperate, which means they're not of that high quality, or I would be paying them to go there if that were the case. So this is, like, don't write me with those kind of questions. I'm interested in helping guys who want to develop themselves or when they put in the effort and actually become the guys that are worthy of dating beautiful women, interesting women. Uh, not that they're just going to get a shortcut by me sending them on a date. That's not how it works, right? Um, you have to put in the effort. You have to be willing to come to Ukraine and put yourself out there and work with me and we're going to coach. I'm going to coach you through it and you're not just going to have an amazing experience if you come. Also, going to learn lifelong skills that you're going to be able to apply later on. Even if you have to go home, you're going to be able to relate to women a lot better than before you came. Because uh, I'm going to run you through all the dating cultural differences and how even that you know Western culture has changed, uh, and how actually being here actually helps you even if you were to go back home. If you are in a second category that uh, contacts me a lot, so you basically uh, want to come to Ukraine. Uh, obviously, if you're a sex tourist and you just don't pay prostitutes, don't call me, don't write me, um, and actually in all fairness, not really anyone directly, it's very rare anyone ever contacts me directly like that, but what happens is that I do get contacted by guys who uh, are not really interested in equality. They just want to bang a lot of Ukrainian girls on their holiday and they couldn't care less if they are super beautiful or actually just like very ordinary or even ugly. Um, and um, you know, if you're basically one of those guys, which I assume you're not, but just don't don't write me because I can't help you. You're gonna be you're gonna be super happy uh, just going to a club and finding the you know going to one of those tourist clubs where it's 95 percent guys and it's a sausage fest. Then maybe you take home the ugliest chick in the club. Who good for her? I mean, she picked a good spot for her to go to, uh, raising her potential to find find guys. But I'm not interested in helping someone who's in, who's down for that. I only help guys who are interested in dating beautiful, interesting women. Uh, nothing like if so. If you're into three, fours, and fives in your own country, don't even like. I'm not the person to help you. Uh, there are, of course, pickup artists. They help a lot of these kind of guys um, who are not into high quality women. They claim that, of course, they're beautiful, but they're not. This is a reality. I found out with enough of them to know that. Um, so they can help uh, that kind of person uh, and actually improve their ability to approach and probably work on them a bit if they're an honest uh, guy who does that kind of dating coaching and not a charlatan, which unfortunately I suspect a lot of them are as well. But anyways, go talk to them. But finally, I'm talking to you. 
if you believe you are the person who can live the Zara experience, you are willing to work on yourself, you want to date beautiful women, you want to come here and not get scammed, you want to not have an issue with rushing because you're going to be with me, you want to party hard and experience the best of Eastern Europe with an expert, then you need to write me. You can do that by email, connorkline at zaraexperience.com or reach out to me uh, on Instagram. My handle there is Zara Experience. And what's going to happen is I'm going to send you a questionnaire. You're going to answer those questions. And if I believe that you're a good fit for living the Zara Experience, then we're going to jump on a short strategy call. And if that all works out and we find an agreement, dates, uh, location, um, it's going to be you. You could be here next weekend, not here in Odessa because I'm about to leave. I'm running out of light, I noticed. So I'm really going to have to finish this one up. I'm not going to ramble on much longer but it could be you and we can go to a city in Eastern Europe and it can be here in Ukraine and one of those three cities Odessa, Kiev or Lviv. So Dopobachina, Dysvidania, see you in the next video. Peace out because the sun has set on my summer in Odessa flying to Kiev. Ciao. Sar experience.